Anatoly. Is the day spring? This is a day that the Lord has made, and we're going to rejoice, and we're going to be glad. Let's stand on our feet. I know you're at home. Let's, like we're in the sanctuary, let's give God the praise, the honor, and the glory that is due his name. Let's put our hands together. Let's magnify him and worship him. I know it's a virtual worship service, but I want you to act like you're in the sanctuary today and lift your hands, and let's just give God some praise on the day, for he is due all the honor. He is due all the glory. He is due all the praise. Let's give God the glory, the honor, and the praise that is due unto his name. Amen. Amen. Father, we thank you so much that before the beginning of time, you were thinking of us, that we were on your mind, you predestined us, you made us, you fashioned us, and you formed us. We are fearfully and wonderfully made. We were on your mind. You said our names are written in your hands. And we thank you so much for the love and care that you give to us. Before I spoke a word, you were singing over me. You have been so, so good to me. Before I took a breath, you breathed your life in me. So, so kind to me. No! 
What a powerful time of worship we've had on this morning as our praise team have ministered in, us into the face of God. And I'm just excited about it. I know that this is a holiday weekend. I know some of you might be traveling. Some of you are watching virtually online. But we just want to let you know that we are excited about what God is doing on this weekend. We're excited that you have tuned in on this weekend. Just got a couple quick announcements that I want to give you this morning that I want you to make note and note your calendars for this. On September the 13th, that's next Sunday, we're back in the parking lot and we're having our drive-in service once again. Next Sunday, September the 13th, we're back in the parking lot. We're having our drive-in service. It's going to be our 3J day. Our 3J day. Jesus, jerseys, and jeans. Jesus, jerseys, and jeans. And so we want you to come on out. We're going to celebrate Jesus. We want you to wear your favorite jersey and some jeans next Sunday. So if you're an Eagles fan, if you are a Cowboys fan, if you are a Redskin fan, if you are a Giants fan, whatever kind of fan you are, you might be a basketball fan and you can wear that jersey. You might be a baseball fan, NHL, whatever it is, team that you want to represent next week. You might want to represent Team Jesus next week and you want to wear some Jesus wear. Guess what? Whatever team you're on, next Sunday, we just want you to come on out and represent. It's a drive-in service. We're having it once again, and we'll also have communion in our cars on next Sunday. We'll have communion in our cars next Sunday. Brothers, 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 this is the last call for men's discipleship. Sign up. We're going to cut off date. It's going to be uh, September the 8th. That's going to be the day after Labor Day, September the 8th, and so that we can order the books and that we can have the books in on time. And on next week, on next week, next Sunday, we want you to stop before and after the service. Come up to the front and pick up your material for the discipleship period. The books will be in next Sunday. They'll be ready. Just want you to stop by get the materials so that we can be all on the same page and we can start together on next Sunday. Also, Dr. Ash, our pastor, has now gotten his surgery date. It is going to be September the 10th on that day, and we want to make sure that we pray for him, so we'll be praying for him on Wednesday night, focal point, and we want you to be there, and we're going to pray for our pastor, we're going to pray that the surgery is successful, and that his pain will be cut down, but also what we want to do, and I'm asking all of our members to participate in this, is that next Monday, September the 14th, is Dr. Ash's birthday, so on September the 13th, we're asking you to bring him some get well cards, we're asking you also to bring him some a birthday card and we ask you to put some weight in that birthday card a get well card a birthday card and a birthday card with some weight inside of that birthday card as we want to uplift his spirits as he recovers from this surgery and we also want to let him know that we have not forgotten about him for his birthday and we want to encourage him in this season so next sunday i want you to bring a get well card i want you to bring a birthday card and i want you to put some weight inside of that birthday card as we celebrate our pastor on his birthday. Amen. Our focal point is next Wednesday night at 7, and we want you to jump in. We're going to be doing part two of our Church Alive series on next Wednesday night. Part two of our Church Alive series on Wednesday at 7 o'clock, our focal point. Ladies, ladies, mark your calendars uh, about the virtual women's discipleship that's going to begin on September the 18th. The title of it is called Enoughness with Dr. Tara Jenkins. Enoughness with Dr. Tara Jenkins. There will be an Amazon link that will be coming to you, and it will be uh, sent out in an email on this week. And also in the app, you will be able to go inside the Dayspring app and sign up for the class. Sign up for the class on the Dayspring app. All of these things will be coming to you in the first part of this week. That is our announcements on the day. Let's give God some praise. I'm excited because it's now offering time. It's offering time. Amen. For everybody that's watching right now online, we want to give you an opportunity to give. We believe that this is good ground for you to sow into. We believe that we're praying that God will bless you and return to you some 30, some 60, and 100 fold. For all of our Dayspring members, it's out of our obligation to the Lord and our obedience to God that we will pay our tithes and offerings. There are three ways in which you can give. The three ways in which you can give are through the mail. You can send it to P.O. Box 550 in Middletown, Pennsylvania, 17057. That's P.O. Box 550, Middletown, Pennsylvania, 17057. You can give that way or you can go online to our Dayspring app. 
church app, a uh, church uh, website, and you can give that way, or you can download the Dayspring app on your cell phone, and you can give that way also. Three ways to give: through the snail mail, online, through our church website, or through the app that is on your phone. We want to give you an opportunity to give. Everybody is prepared to give. I just want to pray over God's offering today as we give God our best on the day. But before I pray, I want to make sure that you remember our pastor in the pastoral love offering. He's so he's labored for 29 years of being the pastor of this church. And we don't want to forget him in this offering time. So I want you to be generous towards the pastor and the pastor's love offering in this time. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to give back to you what is rightfully yours. We ask you now to bless our tithes. We ask you now to bless our offering, that your name will get the honor, that your name will get the glory, and your name will get the praise. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Are y'all ready for the word? I said, are you ready for the word? I'm praying that you got your Bibles in hand. I told you I got I to gotta have my paper Bible in hand. I hope you got your note takers journal. I hope you got a pen in your hand. I want you to turn to the Gospel of John, chapter number five. The Gospel of John, chapter number five. The Gospel of John, chapter number five. I'm, I'm excited about our message today. I think it's going to challenge you, especially in this season that we're all living in, this season that we're all going through at this current moment. The Gospel of John, chapter number five. Starting at verse number one, I want to read it in your hearing. After this, there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there in Jerusalem, by the sheep gate, a pool which is called in Hebrew, Bethsaida, having five porches. In these lie a great multitude of sick people, blind, lame, paralyzed, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down at a certain time into the pool and stirred up the water. And whoever stepped in first after the stirring of the water was made well of whatever disease he had. Now a certain man was there who had an infirmity of 38 years. And when Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he had already been in that condition a long time, he said to the man, do you want to be made well? The sick man answered and said to him, sir, I have no one to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up. But while I am coming, another steps down before me. But Jesus said to him, rise, take up your bed and walk. And immediately the man was made well and took up his bed and walked. And that day was the Sabbath. And that day was the Sabbath. I want to preach to you tonight from a message. You're in a rut and you need to get up. You're in a rut and you need to get up. Let's pray. Father, we thank you just for your grace and your mercy and your loving kindness. We ask you now, Father, to take these next few moments. Help me to decrease, allow your Holy Spirit to increase, to use my mind to think, my mouth to speak, and my body to move. Help me to clearly articulate your word on tonight, Father, that there's somebody who's under the sound of my voice that feels stuck. Somebody that's under the sound of my voice that's in a rut. Somebody in the, under the sound of my voice needs a change. They need a word on today, God. Lord, allow your home, your Holy Spirit to fill me and speak through me directly to them right now. We preach the shackles off of them. We open blinded eyes, remove the, the, the illness that's in our ears and take the deafness away. Open our hearts to receive the engrafted word of God. And Lord, do only what you're able to do right now. Draw the unsaved, reclaim the backslide and give assurance to those who are in doubt. It's in Jesus name we pray. Amen. Amen. I'm, I'm excited about this message because you're in a rut. Now get up. If you're in a rut and you know you need to get up, the, there needs to be some changes that need to take place in your life. I'm reminded of the time that uh, me and some brothers used to get together and we would help the single mothers move, the single mothers in the church move. We would help them move. But on this one day, we was helping this sister move and, and she must have had the first furniture that was ever made. The, the, the furniture was, was so heavy, Elder Mark, that it was like, okay, okay, we gotta get as close as we can to this building. And so when we pulled up to where she was gonna be moving at, 
we were discouraged because she lived on the third floor of this apartment building where she was going to be moving and we had a, a grand piano, baby grand piano that we were supposed to be taking up the three flights of stairs and, and, and me being the, uh, the person that tries to make the situation a little bit easier. Uh, her apartment was over there and it had these wooden gates in the front. So I took the slats out of the wooden gate and I backed the moving truck up because, you know, I was in the military and I could drive large vehicles. And as I backed through the gate, we're going back and the, and the buzzer's going off. Ba, 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 but I'm beeping. And so I made it throughout, through the gate without scraping up the truck. And as I was going back, it hit me, Elder Mark, that it had rained the day before. And the weight that was in the truck, the truck began to sink. And it, we were halfway to where the apartment building was, and the truck wheels started spinning. And all of a sudden, I felt the weight of the truck start to sink down, and now the truck was stuck in a rut because our tires had spit and spit and spit, and now we're at a place where we got to get this stuff off of this truck into this apartment and then we got to get this truck out of the middle of this apartment complex landscape because uh, 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 they're not going to be happy because we done messed up the grass and we need to get up out of there. I, I, I'll never forget it, I'll never forget it, but I realized that the only way that we could get the truck to move, Elder Mark, was that we had to unpack the truck where the truck was, carry the furniture up the stairs, we got that baby grand piano up to the stairs, and, and once we lightened the load on the truck, the truck will be able to move. I'm speaking to somebody here today that you're so weighed down today that God sent me by to help unload, unpack the truck of your life, unpack the issues of your life to make yourself a little bit lighter so that you will be able to move, to make yourself a little bit lighter so you'll be able to get out of the rut, to make yourself a little bit lighter so that you will now be able to move on and get on with the next phase of your life. In the midst of this COVID-19 situation, it's been March, we've been locked down, and some of us have gotten in ruts. We've now allowed ourselves to be depressed. We've now allowed ourselves to be consumed by with everything that was taken about, and we become weighed down in life. We become weighed down with our issues. We become weighed down in our trials. We become weighed down in our tribulation. And I need to let you know that you're in a rut, and you need to get up. I don't know who I'm speaking to today, but God sent me by here to tell you that you need to lighten your load. You're carrying some stuff that you don't need to be carrying. Cast your cares on him. That's what Psalms 55 and 22 says, because he cares for us. Give it to him. Turn it over to Jesus. Lighten your load so that you can now move. Here in this text in John 5, it's, it's, it's a lovely passage of scripture. I, I, I love it because it tells about a man that's been in the condition for a long time. Uh, the condition that he was in, they did not say, but it, they said it was an infirmity of 38 years. We see in the text that he is stuck at a place where he can't move when he needs to move and everybody has walked past him. Now think about this. How long have you been in this situation? How long have you been in this condition as this man? For 38 years, he's looked at everybody's feet. For 38 years, he's watched everybody walk past him. For 38 years, he's watched people step over him. For 38 years, he's just been uh, uh, really not even noticed by everybody that's around him because of his condition. And I want to speak to somebody here today that how long... Will you be in that condition? How long will you be a drug addict? How long will you be a drunkard? How long will you go from man to man? How long will you go from woman to woman? I want to speak to you today and I want to challenge you today to look at your conditions that are in your life and I ask you this question, how long, how long, or how long will you be here? I want to speak to you today because sometimes we become comfortable in our sins. Sometimes we become comfortable in our situations and that's not what God has designed for and I want to know from you today how long will you be there? How long will you park on Pity Place? How long will you be on Sawful Street? How long will you be on Anxiety Avenue? How long will you be this on Morning Way? I want to speak to you today that God does not want you to remain stuck. God does not want you in this rut. God wants you to change your situation. But I need to know from you when is enough going to be enough? When have you had enough? 
uh, uh, this, this text messes with me because I see some things that are in here today, Rose. I see things in the text, Rose, that I want to challenge you about. Renee, I see things in the text. Uh, uh, Pastor James, I see things in the text, and I want to tonight, I want to give you this morning, I want to give you Q's and E's. All my points start with Q and E. There's a starting point with a Q, there's a sub point with the E, and I want to give you those on tonight because I want you to walk away with the meat from this text. The first thing that I see in this text is the quest of the man. The quest of the man. He, he, the, the text says that he's in, uh, he's in Bethesda, 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 some looks like Bethesda, some translation to have. It's a place of five porches. It's a place where the lame and sick people lie around. It's a place where grace and mercy is that once or twice time of year, an angel will come down, the waters will be stirred up. And whoever around you of that sick people, that sick group of people, the first person that was around them, would, 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 whoever got their foot into the water first, or whoever got their hand into the water, or whoever touched the water first was made well of his illness. And I want to sit down and I want to ask you today on the quest of your life, this is my second point in here is, have you checked your environment? Have you checked your environment? You see, because you got to understand that the environment that the man was in determine his situation. The, the text says that he was around sick people, he was around blind, he was around lame, and he was around paralyzed people. And I wanna speak to us today that, have you checked your environment yet? Have you checked the people that's around you? Have you checked the people that you've been walking with? Have you checked the people that you've been talking with? Are they blind, are they blind, are they lame? Are they paralyzed? Have you checked your environment? Because you cannot go any further than the people that you have surrounded yourself with. If you are the sharpest knife in your group, then your group has become dull and you need to move to a larger circle. If you are the big fish, then guess what? You need to find an ocean and so you can be the tadpole in the ocean and you can grow to the size of the ocean that's around you. But if you're in the pond and you're the king of the pond, I need to let you know that eventually you're going to outgrow that pond. And you got to put yourself in a situation in which you're uncomfortable. And I'm sitting back and I'm asking myself this, is, if I'm an alcoholic, am I going to hang at, out at the bar? If I'm a crack addict, am I going to hang out in the drug house? If I got issues with my sexuality, am I going to be stuck on the internet? If I'm going to be, I got issues of self-esteem, am I going to keep going from relationship to relationship? And the question that I'm asking you today is this, is how long will you hang around the sick people? How long will you hang around the blind people? How long will you hang around the lame people? How how long, how long and how long? Check your environment. All of these people were waiting for the same thing and they were waiting for the same time and they were all waiting for the same move and they all stayed together and they became complacent because they waited for something to happen instead of making something happen. Your quest is your environment. But the next thing that I see in this text is the question, in, chapter, in verse number six, Jesus asked the man the question. He says, do you want to be made well? That's an interesting question for our Lord and Savior to ask this man that has been in this condition for 38 years. That's an interesting question to ask this man who's been by this pool all of this time for 38 years that people have stepped over him for 38 years. He's lied there for 38 years. He's been blind, he's been around blind, lame, and paralyzed people for 38 years. And when Jesus shows up on the scene, Jesus asks him a question. He asks the man a question. He says, do you want to be made well? See, when y'all realize or not, you got some folks around you, some folks that are in your circle that they don't want to get any better. They, they like being sick. They like being tore up from the floor. They like struggling. They like the, ha having issues around them. And I need to let you know that you got to watch those people because they like to keep trouble going because they want to be felt like they are needed. But Jesus asked him a question. He said, hey, hey, just a question, dude. You've been here for 38 years. Do you want to be made well? And, and the thing that bothers me with the text, uh, Elder Mark, is this, is that the man comes back and he gives Jesus an excuse. 
38 years he's been lying there. 38 years they stepped over. 38 years they walked by them. 38 years he's been in that condition. The master, the master shows up on the scene and the master asks him a question. Do you want to be way well? And the man says, the first thing he says to Jesus is this. Sir, I have no one to put me in the pool. That was not the question that Jesus asked him. Stop giving excuses for the, the troubles you're in. Stop making excuses for the strife that's in your life. Stop making issues for the situations that you're going through. Stop making excuses for all of these things that are going on around you and answer the question, do you want to be made well? And don't give an excuse for why you messed up. Don't give an excuse by your relationship to talk. Don't give an excuse why your finances are jacked up. Don't give an excuse, but just answer the question. And God is asking us today, do you want to be made well? Answer the master. Answer the master. I, I want to pause right here, Elder Mark, because we've got some people that are on their quest in life. And as they're on their quest for life, they need to check the environment of the people that they have surrounded themselves with. The master shows up and he asks a question. And the first thing that we do is we like to give excuses for what we are going through. Excuses for our trials, giving excuses for our tribulations, giving excuses for what has been taking place. But I want to let you know today, even on your quest and you've got your environment, even with your with the qu the question that Jesus asked you and the excuse that you gave him, I want to show you something about our master that's right there in the text. It, it blesses me right there in verse number six. Let's read verse number six. Verse number six. And when he saw him lying there and knew that he had already had been in that condition a long time, he said to him, "Do you want to be made well?" Uh, at the further examination of the text, as I began to look at the text, I see some things in verse number six that encourage my heart. The first thing that I see is that God sees. That his name is El Roi. It's the Old Testament name out of Genesis chapter 16 is that the Lord sees. And then I see something else. That not only does he see me in my situation, Elder Mar, but he already knows about what I'm going through. Because the text says, and Jesus knew. I want to let somebody know that not only does God see, not only does God know, but I need to let you know in that text, Jesus speaks. And I need to let you know that God will speak to you in your situation. He'll speak to you in the midst of the storm. If you slow down enough, if you focus focus hard enough, you hear the voice of God speaking to you. You hear God giving you instruction. You hear God talking to you right now. He says, I've been speaking to you. I've been talking to you. But I need you to slow down so that you can hear me. I see you. I know about you. I'm going to speak to you. And then the text says, and Jesus knew, and he asked him, did he want to be made well? And that God cares. Not only does God see, not only does God know, not only does God speak, but I need to also let you know that God cares about you. And that's a sermon within itself that we have a God that sees, that sits high and looks low. We have a God that his eyes run to and fro throughout the earth and to whom he may show himself strong. We have a God that has all knowledge and all ability to understand and comprehend. We have a God that's able to speak no matter what language is in the country, no matter what language is in the world, that he's able to speak that language to him. And we have a God that cares for us. No matter what we're going through, regardless of the time, the situation, that he always cares about us. And that's good news for me today. And I want to speak to somebody here today that you've been discouraged and you think nobody cares. But I need to let you know that God cares. You think nobody knows, but I need to let you know, guess what? God knows. You think that nobody wants to talk to you, but I need to want you to let you know that God wants to speak to you. Not only does he know, not only does he care, not only does he see, but he loves you. And he loves you unconditionally. John 3 16 that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. I want to speak to you regardless of your sin, regardless of what you've done, regardless of what you said, regardless of where you lay, God loves you, God cares about you, and God wants you to confess your sins and turn your life over to him. God sees God knows, God speaks, and God cares. So we have the quest and we have the environment on your daily travels, on your quest of life. Check your environment that you have around you. You have a question that the master asks you, 
and, and stop giving excuses. And as you stop giving these excuses, realize that God sees you. Realize that God knows. Realize that God speaks and that also that God cares. And then the last point that I want to give you on this night, on tonight is in verse number eight. Verse number eight. And Jesus said to him, rise, take up your bed and walk. Rise, take up your bed and walk. Get up out of your bed and walk. Man, get up. Take. I, I, it blows my mind right here because Pastor James and Pastor Ashley, it blows my mind because the text says, rise, take up your bed and walk. Now, this man has been in this condition for 38 years. He's laid there for 38 years waiting for the troubling and the stirring of the waters and everybody beat him in there for 38 years. Jesus now shows up on the scene. Jesus does not anoint him with oil. Jesus don't tell him to speak in tongues. Jesus don't, don't, don't roll him in no dirt. Jesus don't spit in the mud and make no mud pie. Jesus don't grab him. Jesus don't lay a hand on him. Jesus speaks a word to this man and he says, rise up. Take your bed. And walk, rise, take up your bed and walk, rise. And I want to talk to you today because sometimes all we need is a quote from scripture. All we need is just one word from God. I know you're trying to look for the Bible from Genesis to Revelation, but sometimes all we need to do is hold on to one word. All we need to do is hold on to one promise. All we need to do is hold on to one scripture in the midst of our storms, in the midst of our trials and tribulations. All we need is to hold on to a word. And Jesus spoke to this man and he said, rise. Take up your bed and walk. He didn't touch him. He didn't lay all on him. He didn't tell him to lift his hands. He didn't tell him to speak in tongues. He didn't roll him around on the floor. He did not try to put him in a miracle line. He didn't have to do anything. Jesus just gave him a word. I'm speaking to you now as I'm looking into this camera. All you need is a word from God. And a word from God will change your situation. It will change your life. And you will never ever be the same from one word. Jesus quotes to him, rides up and take your bed and walk. Verse number nine, we see the ex exhortation. And, and here's what happens. And immediately, verse eight and nine, we see the exhortation. And immediately the man was made well. And he took up his bed and he walked. And that day was the Sabbath. Now that presents another issue a little later on in the text. I ain't got time to deal with that today. But Jesus says, get up, do something. And as a quote that I love from the movie John Q, you got to do what? Something. You got to do something. And when Kimberly Lee speaks to Denzel Washington in that movie John Q, he says, do something. I need to let you know that you can't just sit there and lay there and wait to happen. Matter of fact, the other day I was in a store and I saw this plaque. I saw this plaque and, 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 and it spoke to me, Elder Mark. The plaque said, now you had a dream. And a dream is still a dream until you do something. We got a whole lot of folks that had some dreams of greatness. We had a whole lot of folks that had dreams of stardom. We had a whole lot of folks who had dreams, but they just had a dream and they put no action with their dream. So it's still just a dream. But when you put actions with your dream, when you move when God tells you to move, when you do what God tells you to do, when you walk when God tells you to walk, guess what? Your life will never, ever be the same. And I want to speak to somebody today that you've been laying there and you've been waiting there and you've been twiddling your thumb and you're waiting waiting for a feeling or a sensation. I'm telling you what Jesus told the man in the text tonight. Get up. Get up. Get up out of that bad relationship. Get out of that drug addiction. Get out of that alcoholism. Get out of those suicidal thoughts. Get out of that depression. Get out that anger. Get out of that anxiety right now. I'm giving you a word and now you need to move and do what God told you to do. Get up and get out of this situation. You're in a rut, and now you need to get up. Back to the premise of the story that I started with, after we unloaded the truck, we found out an amazing thing, that when I got back in and cranked the truck up, the truck pulled right out of the, out of the rut that it was in because the load had been taken off of it. What is the day that you need to leave with God? What is it that you need to put on the altar today? What situation have you been trying to carry 
all on your own that you won't allow God to move in that situation. I want to challenge you today to leave it on the altar. Let God deal with it. Trust God in this situation right now and allow God to move. But you can't do it in your own strength. You got to allow God to be God. And when he speaks that word, you move on that word in which he has spoken to you. You're in a rut. Now, get up. That means you. Don't be looking at me. I'm looking at you. That situation ain't going to change until you what? Till you move. Stop crying. Wipe up your tears. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy will come in the morning. I need to let you know that you got to count it all joy when you're in your trials and your tribulations. One, two, three, four. Count them all what? Joy that you're going through. I want to speak to you today that guess what? That all things work together for his good. If you are his and you know that all things work together, every trial, every tribulation, every up, every in, every out, up, down, whatever the situation is, it will work out for your good. But you got to trust him in the midst of of your storms. You're in a rut, my brother. You're in a rut, my sister. You're in a rut, my family. You're in a rut, pastor. You're in a rut, preacher. You're in a rut, church. And now it's time to get up. Get up and move. Do something today. Doing nothing is not an option. God bless you. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your grace, your mercy, and your loving kindness. Lord, I sense right now, just by the move of your spirit, that you're calling somebody on today. Somebody unsaved that wants to surrender. Somebody backslidden wants to rededicate their life. Somebody wants to join this church. And God, I pray that you would just have your way with them right now in the name of Jesus. Do what only you're able to do. Touch, heal, and deliver. If you're here today and you're watching online, which all of us are on today, I want to challenge you today that if you have never given your life to Jesus Christ, that means you've never surrendered to the Lord Jesus Christ. You've never asked him to forgive you of your sins and to come in your life. Here's what sin is. We try to make it into something great. Have you messed up before? The answer is what? I, I, I've messed up before. Have you fallen short of doing some things wrong in your life? Yes, I've done some things wrong. I've fallen short. If you messed up and you've fallen short and you need forgiveness, guess what? That's what getting saved is, is we ask God to forgive us and we ask God to forgive us through his son Jesus. Romans 10, 9 and 10 says that we confess in our mouth the Lord Jesus and that we believe in our heart that God has raised him from the dead, that we will be saved. So if you're watching here today on virtually online today, I want to give you an opportunity to get saved today. I want you to pray this short prayer after me. After you pray this short prayer, you will be saved. God will forgive you of all your wrongs of your past. He'll wash your slate clean and you will start new. First John 1 and 9 says that if we confess our sins, he being God is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So here we are. We want to pray this prayer. Say, Lord, repeat after me. Say, Lord Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Lord, I'm wrong and I need some help. Lord, I believe in my heart that Jesus Christ died on the cross for my sins. And I ask you now to forgive me of all my sins and to come into my life and to save me on today. I thank you for saving me. It's in Jesus' name. Amen. If you prayed that short prayer with me today, I want to let you know that you're now giving your life to Jesus Christ. There's going to be an email address that's at the bottom of the screen. Email us at that address. Let us know about the decision that you have made. We're going to have some counselors contact you and walk with you on the next steps of the directions of the things that you need to go. If you're in on the screen and you're, you're watching night virtually and you've been in a backslidden state and God is speaking to you and you need to rededicate your life, I want to give you an opportunity today to rededicate your life. I've been away from it before. I've been in a backslidden in the situation before. I know what that feels like and I'd rather be with him than to be away from him. And so today it's just a matter of you returning. Jeremiah 3 tells us three times that he tells us to return back to us. Israel to return back. The backsliding Israel to return back. Three times he compels us to come and I want to compel you today to come and let God heal you of your backsliding state. Or maybe you're here today and you don't have a church home and God spoke to you and you would like Day Spring to be your church family. Guess what? Dr. Ash would love to be your pastor. We would love to be your church family and we want to give you an opportunity today to join us virtually today. Just hit the email address at the bottom of the screen. Let us know that you want to join us virtually and you want to become one of our virtual church members and we would love to take you in in that process. Here it is, unsaved, backslidden, and you're looking for a church home. 
I want to thank you today for you just taking your time out to watch our worship service on the day. I want to thank you that we want to give God the honor and the glory. Next Sunday, September 13th, we're back in the parking lot, our drive-in service. The gates open at 9, the service starts at 10 a.m. We'll have communion in our cars on next Sunday, and we just want to give God the glory. It's 3J Day, Jesus, jerseys, and jeans. That's Jesus, jerseys, and jeans. We want to come and we're going to exalt Jesus. I want you to wear your favorite team's jersey. And guess what? Put on some jeans and we're going to, we'll come together and we'll have a great time of worship on next week. Make sure that you pray for Dr. Ash this week, that the surgery will go well, that his healing will be speedy. And make sure that you bring your get well card and your birthday cards next Sunday as we will be a blessing to our pastor on his birthday on September the 14th. God bless you. I love you. Godspeed for your journey. May he give you traveling grace down the highways and byways. It's in Jesus' name. Amen.